Today I will explain how metal detectors work. Metal detectors or sensors are used to sense metallic objects even if hidden inside non-metallic materials. They are used for treasure hunting but also industrial and military applications. A metal detector is based on three main parts. A signal generator, a IQ resonance circuit made of a serial assembly of a coil and a capacitor, and finally sensing and visualizing means here two probes and the scope. First, the system is tuned at resonance. Resonance is achieved when the two, the two curves are in quadrature phase. Large amounts of energy oscillates between the coil and the capacitor. The magnetic field that spread around outside the coil is allowed to interfere with metallic bodies, if any. The result of the interaction will be visible on the oscilloscope's screen. So let's start with materials that do not interact with the magnetic field. First, my hand. You can see if I bring my hand around, very close, even a little inside, or even if I touch the coil, nothing happens. Now I have a block of glass material, very heavy, and I will check again around the coil, nothing happens. If I put it inside, very close, nothing happens. I have here some sample of the soil, of soil, and we can see that, again, soil, usual soil, has very little effect. Water. I have here some colored water. Again, if I put it around the coil, or even inside, we see no changes. What happens with material that really interact with the field? I have here a ferrite core, alpha core, and I will bring it close to the coil. As you can see, there is a large shift frequency. The frequency shift on the right, meaning that the resonance frequency has decreased. Uh, this is because the ferrite increases the inductance of the coil. I have now an iron disc. If I bring it close to the coil, we have now a shift in frequency, but it's on the left side, meaning that the resonance frequency has increased, or equi equivalently that the inductance is decreased. If I bring the uh, iron part vertically, you can see that the frequency shift is on the other direction. Let's now consider an uh, aluminum disc. It's quite thick. And I will bring it close to the coil. It's vertical. There is very little change when it's vertical. And when I put it horizontally, there is again a large shift. Let's now try a specific alloy. Here, when I bring the stuff in the coil, you can see that we have a very strange property. There is no frequency shift, only amplitude of the blue curve is increased. Let's now consider a smaller object. Here I have a cutter blade. Uh, I'll bring it close. You see that there is a shift on one side. And if I bring it vertically, 
there is a shift on the other side. This is a standard coin. I bring it close to the detector. You see that there is a shift, even if the object is quite small. If the coin is vertical, the shift is still there, but smaller. The range depends on the size of the object. For large objects, the range can be a few times the diameter of the coil, here about 20 cm. And for a small object, the range is much smaller, a few centimeters for a coin here. The range depends on the quality, fa quality factor of the circuit. The range is larger if the resonance is sharper. Thank you for watching.